as Jews, we know that time is both a line and a circle. It's a line because we move from one day to the next, to the next week or month or year or decade or century, etc. But it's also a circle because each year we return to certain days. And certain special days have certain attributes or signatures or energies. Rosh Hashanah, for example, is uniquely appropriate to recognize God as the creator of the universe. On Yom Kippur, our prayers for forgiveness are more readily accepted. And on Passover, we have special protection. But our sages tell us that someday, when the Mashiach comes, in the Messianic era, all of those holidays will disappear. We won't need them any longer. We won't need Rosh Hashanah because it'll be obvious that God created the universe and he runs it. We won't need Yom Kippur because none of us will be sinning any longer. And we won't need that special protection of Passover because we'll have it every day. But, the rabbis tell us, two holidays will remain on the calendar. One of them is Purim. That makes sense. If you have a holiday that's that enjoyable, why get rid of it? But the other one is surprising, if not shocking. It's Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av will remain as a holiday. But one second, Tisha B'Av is not a holiday. It's not a celebration. It's a disaster. It's a tragedy. It's a root canal. What the rabbis mean to say is that it will become a holiday. Why? Because for the first time, after thousands of years, we'll finally have answers to those unanswerable questions of how could or why did God allow this or that tragedy to happen? And when we do get those answers, we'll see how everything makes sense, how everything is interconnected. We'll see God's hand written across the broad path and scope of history. And we'll smile. We'll be comforted. We'll have peace of mind. We'll celebrate. But that still doesn't seem to make sense because Tisha B'Av's unique signature or energy seems to be one of destruction or desperation. So how could that turn into one of celebration? The answer is that it has always been one of celebration, not of destruction. Why? Because the original Tisha B'Av, the first ninth day of Av in the desert, the spies returned from their tour of Israel. And they were supposed to bring back a good report. The report that two of them, Kalev and Yehoshua, Joshua, did bring back. A report saying, yeah, the inhabitants of the land of Canaan are strong and they're big. But the bigger they are, the harder they'll fall. We will win because God's on our side. But the ten other spies destroyed that. They bastardized that message. They said, they're too big. We'll never be able to beat them. And the people of Israel believed them and they cried. And God said, you cried today for no reason. In the future on this day, I'll give you something to cry about. That day should have been one of celebration. The people should have been saying, yes, we're going into the Holy Land. And instead they cried. So since then, God has taken that celebratory energy and he's masked it. He's covered it up throughout the generations even through today. Many years later, on two different occasions, the temples were both destroyed on Tisha B'Av, and so many other tragedies occurred on that day. We're told that the temple was destroyed because of sinas chinam, senseless hatred among Jews. They just could not get along. Well, if we're going to rebuild that temple, if we're going to build a third one, we've got to rectify that problem. We've got to get along. And I must say that in my lifetime, I do not recall a period of such extended solidarity amongst Jews as the one we are in the midst of right now. Since the time when those three innocent teenagers were kidnapped, through the search, through the grisly discovery of their bodies, through the commencement of Hamas's outrageous attacks on the civilian population of Israel, through Israel's just and measured and appropriate response to defend itself, Jews of all types, with only a handful of knuckle-headed exceptions, have banded together. Tall Jews and small Jews and male and female and religious and non-religious and everybody in between praying together, studying together, donating together, donating time and donating money, making solidarity trips, sending supplies, showing support, writing op-eds, doing everything that we can to support the cause, standing together with one voice, educating those people with broken moral compasses to teach them the difference between good and evil, to teach them the difference between terrorists, not militants, terrorists and innocents, to teach them the difference between a people that values human life versus one that doesn't. If we can continue to do that, if we can continue to stand together as one, who knows, we Jews may yet build that third temple 
sooner than we expected.